Hey everybody, Kelly Sue from Cleopatra Art Studios here and we're painting a bear porch cleaner that is going to be used as a giveaway for one of the lucky teachers in Tahoma School District. And I'm just using some paint gray and white for the base for the mountains. And Tahoma Elementary School is in Tahoma School District and they have a great view of Mount Rainier. So we're doing a large mountain that's a little, a little Mount Rainier-ish, but not, hold on, let me back that off a little bit. So um, not incredibly um, copycat on the mountain. It just has kind of a flattish top. It's a little pointy on one side. And so this is going to be a giveaway for Tahoma Elementary School for their family night. Um, and whoever, which classroom has the most um, ticket sales will win this for the teacher as a, just a porch cleaner right outside its door. It, I'm not sure what it's going to read yet. Welcome to our class, maybe. And I'm going to leave the sky brown like that so the wording shows really well and then what i also want to do is the school colors are bright yellow and blue so our flowers are going to be that color so my um i'm just getting over being sick sorry about the voice guys my voice is a little off but mountains in front are always a little darker than the mountains in the back and it's just an ocular illusion. It means that if you walk up to all the mountains, they're actually the same color. I might have to add a little more black to this. But because your eye, the cones in your eye get softer for distant items, what happens is then um, your eye makes the distant object dreamier, a little softer. So I think this is probably going to be a pretty long video. I don't know if I'm going to get everything done at once. I'm just a little black to this. It's just the first layer. It's a labor of love doing something this intricate. And we do love Tahoma Elementary School. So all I did was I did not stain the, the wood. All I did was take some brown and water it down. Brown paint, brown acrylic paint, water it down. And I wanted the um, bear to have a little bit more depth. So that's why I didn't paint him on bare wood. So this is the first layer in um, the mountains. I'm going to come back and Bob Ross it up a little bit, but that looks pretty good for now. <coughs> and I'm going to make them a little dark green for around the bear. I'm going to leave a little shadow around the bear allowing the dark brown to outline for me. So I'm gonna paint right up to my chalk. And then what I'll do is erase the chalk line later and it'll leave an outline. It's just a really easy fix if you're a school teacher. Um, one of my favorite projects is drawing a vase of flowers on a black canvas with white chalk. And then when the kids erase the chalk, because they're not gonna paint over the chalk line, What's gonna happen is you have this awesome black outline without adding any extra effort. And then what happens is the black underpainting adds a really cool depth to the painting. So the landscape, or I'm sorry, the horizon line is always very awkward, guys. So what we do is we typically, as artists, cover it up. So he's cute, he's huge. There's gonna be a lot of shading to keep him as a fun as he is right now. 
because I'd already painted the board brown, I'm not going to use as much paint. The, the board isn't as thirsty, I guess I should say. So hopefully you guys are having a good day. If you're just joining me, let me know where you're coming from. If you're a new viewer or if you watch me all the time. So I offer these at um, in-person paint parties and then obviously for giveaways for schools that are having me in or having my whole team in as a um, paint party fundraiser for their families. What's so cool now is people can buy the kits, join us live or buy the kits. And um, you don't have to feel like they're not missing it. They're missing out because the timing didn't work. Because let's face it, spring sports are killer. I'm gonna go a little bit bluer and darker in this green here to put a nice shading. Because he's floating right now. I know you can't see all of it. He's floating right now, but I'm gonna have him in a field of grass that's gonna be coming up. And the flowers are going to be the school colors, which are blue and yellow. It's pretty adorable, I think. I was gonna paint the sky blue, but I decided, nah, I'm not gonna do it. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's see, are we dry already? We are dry. Our whiny dog is here, so it's possible that um, we're gonna have to take a break if she gets too bad. There's other people in the house. They think they could put them outside for me. That would be great. So our mountain in the background is gonna be a little dreamier. Normally I'd add purple to my mountain, but I'm just not gonna because it helps tie in with the school color. And quite frankly, it's my painting. I can do what I want. <laughs> so if you're ever taking a class from me, that's what I'm gonna tell you. It is your painting. So I'm just gonna use a palette knife. I'm just, so a lot of people think they scoop, but you don't, you place your knife in the palette, in the paint, excuse me, in the paint. I think we're gonna need to make a little more. Paint's great, this is two. And you're just going to, this one's a little bent. I really like the um, metal ones a little bit better. I think this mountain needs to be a little taller too. It's a little bit adjustment as we're painting here. I'm gonna get my phthalo blue. My paint's gray is really not, not loving it, let's put it that way. I'm going to put some dark in first and I'm just going to keep it really simple. This is an elementary school. They're more about, you know, like the brights, the bright colors. They don't really um, give two hoots if I spent five hours getting the depth looking just right on this painting or not come up a little bit. There's another, another craggy mountain right there. It's pretty simple. You just start layering away and I try to decide which direction the light source is coming from and what areas are um, lit up basically. Hi mama. See that you're watching mama. So this is a good first coat. I'll come back and put some more definition in that, but let's go ahead and go to the lower mountains. They have snow on them too. So I'm grabbing some white, I'm grabbing some Payne's gray, and I'm gonna just start playing with the tops of them. Okay, I really hate that. That one needs to be retired. Here we go, I got a middle one. Thicker paint's better, but I'm not grabbing my heavy body acrylics for this particular project. Oh yeah, this one's way better. And the snow is not gonna go all the way down. You kind of decide, you know, where does the snow let up? This is just a really fun technique. I wanna go darker with these hills in front. 
the Ruby Mountains, but Mount Rainier is spectacular. Let me know if you've ever seen Mount Rainier. It is honestly spectacular. And it's so big, it just dwarfs these other mountains underneath them. And I had, when I lived there, I kind of thought I'd love to do the whole walk around. I think it takes a really long time. But as a mom and business owner, I just never had that kind of time to devote. Okay, plus between me and you, I hate backpacking. So I'd literally have to have a Sherpa that would carry my stuff. <laughs> okay, so I probably shouldn't talk so much. Okay, I'm gonna put a little white on the top of that. That'll help it kick off. Make it look a little bit more um, noticeable in the background. And so you're just gonna play with the tops. And you're gonna play in values of white, black and blue. Uh, it's pretty simple. You got to kind of know when to stop. And I'm going to tell you right now, when you have thick paint, you don't know what you have until it dries. Seriously. It sounds like a song. You don't know what you got till it's gone. It's true. You don't know what you got until it dries. I feel like this back mountain is a little bit too light. But that's okay. We'll get it. We'll get it worked out. I like to trail black. You just kind of build your mountain scene. After you have the back one, you can build the front one. And the wood makes it a little bit difficult. But just keep playing. And so your mountain should have some black, some white, different values of blue. I'm probably going to leave those alone and I'm going to move on to <coughs> my bear, which I feel is going to take all, I say I'm going to leave it alone, but I'm coming right back, aren't I? Um, the bear, which is going to take an awful lot of time because we have all those browns. So palette knives are really easy to clean up. I like the metal ones. You can get a five pack from Amazon for like six dollars. They're really awesome to have around. And they give you kind of a really great technique with hard landing work. I'm gonna hide that under there. And so when you're painting on these, you can also hide your stuff underneath. It's a win-win for everybody. Okay, so I'll be working in shades of brown, tan, burnt sienna, also known as cinnamon at our studio. Burnt or raw sienna, also known as raw ochre. And I'll probably put some, I think I'm gonna put a little teal. Oh, let's make some gray. I have some gray ready. Let's do some gray. Cute little bear. Oops, paint down. And I'm gonna have to make some black, or I'm, I can't make black, guys, um, some dark brown. I know I'm starting with something that is pretty long and I'm just getting my voice back. Stay healthy, guys. Haha. <laughs> okay. I'm making myself laugh. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. I'm probably trying to decide if I want to use my big paintbrush or my favorite round brush. All right, so let's talk about where he's going to be dark. He's going to be dark in the areas like under his chin, behind his shoulder, behind his arms. Um, again, under his arms, around part of his feet. And so Tahoma's bear is a brown bear. So I don't want to lose sight of that and go too black, but we're still going to deal with shadows. So I'm going to go kind of dark. Right away, I'm painting right up to the chalk line. Remember, actually I could go a little darker there. Right up to the chalk line. 
I'm gonna erase the chalk line and I'm gonna have that edging around him. Okay, I'm gonna go right into black underneath his um, elbow. My kids call it the weenus. I don't know if that's true or if that's just them being kind of weird. <laughs> the weenus. Have you guys ever heard it called that? And you know what? They went through this phase. I don't know if your kids do this, where they come up when you're working and they lick your weenus and you're not supposed to be able to feel it and you can't. And it's really gross, <laughs> but you can't feel it. I'm just going to put some shading in here, a little underneath his, his arms. And then I'm going to transition to the brown. So I put that first stain, well, it wasn't a stain, I put some watered down paint on him. Um, his face is gonna be a little lighter. I might practice piece next to me. And it's just a matter of bringing down some long brush strokes. And we are going to double load here in just a second. I just wanna get started. There, blended pretty nicely. We're gonna start double loading, which means I'm picking up more than one color at a time. So I'm gonna start picking up, I'm gonna go into, I'm gonna go into the tan first. We'll see, we'll see if I like it or not. Want it to look like long bouts of fur without being too long. Without everything blending too much together. Remember, I don't want to go too dark. He's not a black bear. And I don't have to put a lot of focus down here because his, his uh, haunch, I guess it's his butt that he's sitting on, is going to be covered with green grass. But I still want to give it a nice texture that you're going to see. Just dipping in more than one color at a time. And it's just mixing together. I don't want them too honey. Hopefully he's not getting too honey-ish. <coughs> so let me know if you've ever seen a bear. I know my mom just said she just saw a mom and cubs. I know mom, you shouldn't be walking by yourself every day. Um, Two cubs, whoop, stepped on a basset. Two cubs and a mama just last week. Wanted to go see him, but I thought I had bronchitis. I took like three COVID tests. Um, they were all negative. So, but I guess there's other crud going around, guys. Oh my God, it, between me and you, it was, it, I, I felt like it was worse than COVID, so. Uh, I feel like he got a little light on the side here. What I can do is just bring in some just plain, you know, like the reddish brown if I wanted to. And I just, I want to keep short little brush strokes, no longer than maybe an inch or two. So he still resembles, you know, the fur of a bear. You can put... I'm going to go into some gray. Let's see if I like the gray. Mm, maybe. You just don't know until you put more than one brush stroke on, guys. So I'm going to gray him up a little on the sides. And it's nothing, if I don't like it, it's nothing I can't fix later. So I'm going to curve him here. Put in some black. Curve them a little bit. Okay. All right, I'm digging it. Okay, so his arms are gonna have a lot more light hitting them than his belly. So I'm gonna steer clear of the black, gonna make myself some dark brown. And so far everything I've done is pretty simple, right? Dark brown and gray. Everything I've done is pretty simple. Kind of stayed within the lines. 
and I keep my brush strokes going in the direction I want my texture of my hair to be. Okay, so up above, I'm gonna tell you right now, he's too light, but that's okay. We're gonna keep it building it. So I'm gonna come back and just a little bit with some darker brown. So why wouldn't I do it now? It's just gonna mix. But I really like this base I have on his arms. <laughs> a little bit too much gray. And after I erase the chalk lines, if I feel like I need a little bit more definition, I can outline his arms then. I like it on the top, so it looks hairy. So this one should go this way. Okay, by the way, you'll have one side that'll be awesome and the other side not so great because we have a side we favor. I'm gonna bring in some of that dark brown again for underneath. Keep that brush stroke going, doing it all with brush strokes, guys. And I do feel like he needs a little, little, mm, not that. We're gonna go with the, with the tan. So I'm not an artist that knows exactly what color to use all the time. I'm a visual person. I have to see if I like it or not. And sometimes I have to sit on it for a couple days. So this area behind his hand needs to be darkened up with the dark brown. So I'm just gonna go underneath the black and I wanna go out a bit, like he's furry. And I didn't do a very good job on this side like I did on that, you know, showing that he's got some fur action happening Come in with some black. Ta-da. So he's coming together. I'm a little nervous about the face, but I'm gonna keep, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm actually gonna go around his nose and mouth with black, a smaller paintbrush, right up next to that chalk line. On either side, keep that kind of darker. And inside his mouth is dark. And maybe under, under here a little bit. He's a little dark there. And I'm just gonna kind of clean up my paintbrush. He'll be lighter there, he'll be darker in his ears. Just clean it out. hardly have anything on my paintbrush. <coughs> I think I'm gonna come in with a little white. I can use my palette knife if I wanted to, or you could use a smaller paintbrush. Hmm, just kind of using the side of it. Just to give him some highlights in his tummy area, not too much. That curve line, show that he's got this big belly in the center. If I don't like those, I can come back with a paintbrush and blend them up later. I wanna see what it looks like, I wanna let it dry. Also black, give him a little black mohawk here. His nose is gonna be black, and then I'm gonna put his snot line in there. You know, that area that 
shows that he is alive. And I'm glad that I have a really nice base because I'm going to come in with a brownish cream nose. And it's got that great base to it. I keep running into black everywhere I go. Brown's going to show through. Probably looking at giving that a second coat. I have some paint left on my paintbrush. I'm gonna go ahead. And highlight, let's say he's got like, his hair is parted. And I'm just going to use my small paintbrush for the face. I mean, he looks a little too gray. So it's all about adjusting. I know I want to stay in that um, cinnamon area for him. Keep my brush strokes small. Because Tahoma bear is a brown bear and not a black bear and not a grizzly and not a honey badger. And this is for their school. And I'm gonna mix black and gray together to do the inside of his ear. Okay, I'm gonna come back and make them a little darker, but let's just put up a little base in there inside of his ear. around his ear. Keep playing with colors until you're happy. And remember, as it's drying, that brown's gonna pop through. Looking pretty cute. Let's move on down to his feet. Um, I am going to basically, it's the bottom of his feet. I'm basically going to outline with a gray. And the pad, I'm going to do blackish. It can have a little bit more definition, but this is not where I'm spending the bulk of my time. So I'm going to paint it black and then scrape in some browns. And his toes, I'm going to put black at first. I'm going to go around it with black. Pretty darn simple. I think you guys can see that okay. I actually did pull up my, my photo real quick. So I'm seeing now, I'm seeing on the photo that some areas could be a little darker. 
because it's drying and the light is being absorbed from the brown that we popped on there first. He's still looking pretty cute though. Pretty cute, pretty cute. Okay, same situation over here. I am coming in around with this gray. Painting the inside soft, that pad foot. Maybe black. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on his feet, just maybe the tops because underneath is where the flowers will be. And chase it around with some black. giving them five toes. Do you guys know how many toes a bear has? Yeah, me either. <laughs> I think I would like to put some um, gold on him. Metallic gold. I feel like his beak needs one more coat. have to go a little darker on his beak. And he needs a little, little frown here. Do that in gray. me. I'm going to, I kind of need some little curls, little curls. So I'm going to come back in. With some of that brown, he tends to, I tend to go a little bit honey on him. I think that's okay. All right. So the feet, I'm going to go, let me pull up some gold. If, if I decide that I don't like it, I can easily cover it up if it's too bright. But let's check it out. I think it might be too bright. Sometimes I have to look on the camera to see what I think. I think... Some reason it looks interesting. You know what? I have another gold. Different manufacturers have different. Yeah, perfect. What they think gold is. Yep, this is a browner gold. It's almost brass. This one's going to be perfect. I'm just using my finger. You know me, leave a little DNA behind. Gosh, if I ever took on a life of crime, they'd catch me in no time. <laughs> CSI, they'd be at my door super fast. All right, these ones need to dry. And then I'll go over them. He needs some claws. I think we can both agree. I need to highlight his paw here one that is on the outside. I'm going to do a little bit of highlighting with gray. Almost looks like he's um, a grizzly, like grizzled, like gray. He needs to get into the beautician. Me too. I'm wearing a hat today, guys, because yes. 
I live with a beautician and I really need to get in to see her. <laughs> okay. All right, so let's talk about little tiny toes. Probably more like claws, but anyway. I'm not really gonna spend a lot of time on those. And I'm just gonna say, my gray is still. They're more like cute paws than, you know, something that's going to be utilized to, you know, like tear me apart. <laughs> Let's do a couple little hairs here and there. And yes, I'm choosing to do that in gray for whatever reason. Okay. Face. He's going to have a couple little flyaway hairs here. Let's get in with that dark black around his gray. Side his ear. Just a little scrub here and there. His nose, I am going to smear a nose shine at the top. And then underneath, I'm going to do like that. Yeah, I might revisit that nose here in a second. Yeah, that looks a lot better. Cute. He's so stinking cute. And let's see, I really want to put that black line next to his face again. Next to his nose, I really did lose it. It's okay that your plate looks like caca. It's completely fine. Just don't go running into your other colors. Now the um, bottom of his nose, oh, get out of the black lady, should be a little darker. Get out of the black lady. I'm gonna clean up my fingers. There we go. Cute. So what am I doing with the eyes? I'm gonna outline them in black. Give him a black eyeball. I might have to, I'm gonna give him a white eye gleam and I might bring in more, so his eyes should be pretty dark. You know, those predators, you don't see them coming by the whites of their eye. I am gonna put a tiny little dot and it could you could do this with gray. Let's do it with a light gray. Okay, because we can move on from there. Ta-da! Pretty simple. Pretty simple stuff right there. I also the top of the nose, I'm going to bring that in. So I'm going to let him dry. I could play with him a really long time. I really could. I'm going to let him dry. I'm going to erase the chalk lines and then see what I have. But for now, let's move on to the grass. Clean plate. <coughs> Excuse me. Clean plate. And we're gonna do greens. Should I get phthalo green too? Oh, I got a lime green here. Ooh, lime green it is. Yellow, not too yellow because the flowers will be yellow too. Um, I'll use some phthalo. 
piece of black, phthalo green. I got some teal. I want some teal in there. I don't know why. You know what? I should put some teal on the bear, right? Just a little. I might do it. I, I'm going to do it. Sorry, guys. I like the teal. Just as a highlighter. Just as a highlighter. Gosh, gotta have the teal. It really helped. Okay, perfect. Okay, big paintbrush, get the job done. I'm gonna go darker to lighter, most likely, I think, because I always do. Got some white. I'm gonna move them up a little, guys, so you guys can see a little bit better. So I like to, uh, let's go a little darker. I like to build from the back forward with grass. And everybody's grass is different. Yours might look really whimsical compared to mine. There we go, a little darker. I said I didn't really, really want to worry too much about the feet and this is why. Because we're going right over top of it. I haven't decided, do I want him to hold a little bouquet of flowers in the school's colors? You guys tell me what you think, yes or no. Is he holding something or is he just happy to, that you're in his, in his class? Okay, let me get rid of the black. So this is how easy this is. I've been painting for like 25 minutes. It's gonna be really cute, guys. Trust me, it's gonna be really cute. Bringing in kind of a, a teal color now, eh, a turquoise color. All the way to the bottom. Now let's go in with the greens. If it's blending, hit the blow dryer. But you guys know I don't really care if it's blending or not. Okay. A little bit more yellow on the front ones. You can totally bring in some white grass. And you know what I just remembered? This isn't gonna dry so that I can do those little flowers. So I'm gonna have to just show you the finished product when it's all done. He's so cute. So hopefully, hopefully guys, the school will really like it. I'm gonna play with my mountains and I'm going to put in the flowers on the bottom maybe even at the top. And then I'm thinking about the wording. I have some, I have a stencil. It says, welcome to our gnome. I'm not gonna do that, but I could use just the welcome to our class, or it could be, I could put the teacher's name on the top. Um, I haven't quite decided just yet what I wanna do, but thanks for joining me today. Oops, take my glasses off. Thanks for joining today. I'll see you again real soon and I'll show you the finished product. Bye guys.